Hey, happy new year to each and every one of you. What a great time off. We took darn near two weeks off and uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. New Year's Eve, a little bit different for my producer, John, and me, uh, because we babysat grandkids. And uh, how, how old, uh, John, 11 months or three years? Who'd you stay with, Sammy? Both of them? <laughs> I, we did too. We have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And the four-year-old, I laid down with him. We said these great little prayers. Oh, the kid is amazing. But a one-year-old is basically a perpetual motion ball. They never stop. And when their mom isn't there, hey, great. <laughs> exactly. Am I looking at the wrong camera? See you later, man. Uh, when their mom isn't there and their dad isn't there, Something's wrong. They're in the wrong house, right? They're with the wrong people at midnight and one in the morning and two in the morning. Um, that was a rough, rough night. And, and Ruth and I laughed. Uh, the kids got home at 10 o'clock, 10.30 that morning. And, you know, we went back and we relaxed for a few minutes. We, uh, poor, my poor wife didn't sleep all night. I laid down with Berkeley and he was out by 9, 9.30, something like that. And I slept a few hours and then I heard this wailing down the hall and went down and poor Ruth was walking. And, and the little guy, the one-year-old, was just up virtually all night, so Ruth didn't sleep. But we laughed. How different was it 40 years ago, our New Year's Eve, than it was now? It was so wonderful giving your kids what I wish we would have had. We didn't. We didn't have anyone stay with our kids ever. Uh, we had a babysitter when we moved to Dallas who, uh, we knew the family, who would stay with the boys for two hours. So Ruth and I would run out and grab a bike together like a date and then go home. Never once overnight, never once. Uh, but today it's a different world. You know, the kids are comfortable. The husband and wife want to be together and they want somebody to watch the kids. We're happy to do that for the kids, but man, if they only knew. And my prayer is that those kids, 30 years from now, will honor their children the same way. I don't want to hear one of my kids say, we're not going to help you guys. I, I'm going to come back from the grave, I promised them. Listen, what we're going to talk about today is, I want to feel better, how do I start? And I wore this kind of funky old t-shirt for a reason today. I was getting dressed this morning. <clears throat> See this? Uh, finisher, the White Rock Half Marathon in 1999. Half Marathon, there's the date, I ran it. Uh, folks, a half a marathon's 13.1 miles. 1999, uh, it, it'll be 20 years this year. It was 20 years ago I got this t-shirt. Uh, it still, you know, still kind of fits. Still looking okay in it. Um, and I just couldn't believe it. I don't wear it much because I'm in Texas. It's 180 degrees, you know, here in a couple of months. But I pulled this out to wear it to teach you this. It's a way of answering this for you today. Good health starts with your first step, right? It starts with a commitment. Um, 20 years ago, I was running 20 miles a week. And you think about that, it's really like three miles a day. Some day I do two, some days I do four. But in practicing for this event, I had to run several 10 or 12 mile stints. If you add it up, uh, that was 1,000 miles a year I jogged. And it's around this really neat area around the lake out here. And it would start with a little ramp and then it'd plateau and then a real big ramp up and around the lake and the golf course and so forth. It was a four mile loop. And I remember doing that for years and years and years until my old hips and my old knees kind of gave out on me. Now I just went out. I missed a week. I ate well. I feel great. No flu, no cold. Um, and really stuck to the program because I had so much work to do. The woman's book, it's going into print. The new recipe book is in print. Uh, and so within the next week or so, we will have that. I love this new book, the women's book. I have a very dear friend very dear friend, postgraduate degrees, bright woman, reading my completed manuscript for the woman's guide, the woman's fungal guide. We talk about the woman's yeast guide, right? Yeasts are single cell fungi. Fungi are multiple cell and quite complex animals. They can get on board our body and hurt us. <clears throat> this book, I really use different 
a different approach. She said, reading the book was like I'm sitting down and talking to you personally. And I did that for a couple of reasons, folks. The most important of which is I'm not a woman. I've never had menopause. Uh, uh, you know, I've never had tender breasts. I, I don't have the problems that, that women have. I've never menstruated one hour in my entire life. So how do you address major health problems, not only ovarian, but major health problems, cancer, when you're not a woman and you don't have a uterus? So I really came at it from a different angle. If I were you, based on the thousands of women from doctor's offices that I sat down and counseled some time ago about menopause, about hot flashes, about skin dryness, about cancer, uh, here's what I would do. And she, she's someone I respect very much. She's about three quarters of the way through it. And she told a friend of mine, another dear friend, she loved it. And that coming from her is huge. So I'm so excited for this book to come out. A dear friend of mine, another friend that I've known for 30 years, had some health problems last year. And I was able to sit down with him. Folks, I can't do this any longer. <clears throat> I was just on the phone with a friend of my attorney's, a uh, uh, wonderful guy, uh, called me and he's got a prostate scare. And I'm telling you guys, if you go to a doctor, men, you will have a prostate scare. You will. And women, if you get mammograms, you will have a breast cancer scare. Uh, errors happen to error is human, machines err, uh, false positives, false negatives. And, and I can understand mammography. I still don't understand compressing dense breast tissue and shooting radiation through it. I don't get it. I thought that would cause cancer. I'll never understand mammography. But I do understand the PSA test, and I don't think it works. I'm so opposed to it, I can't believe it. Now, the urologists are totally in favor of it, right? What a source of revenue. Get men in and, you know, do their exam. By the way, the digital rectal exam that, that I've never had one, but that, that most men have, is 1% accurate. If 100 men were standing there with cancer and the doctor did a digital rectal exam on all 100, he'd find one cancer. Boy, there's a good percent. Let's take it a step further. The FDA approved <clears throat> the PSA test 19, what, 79, 81, something like that, 82, because it was 300 times more accurate than the digital rectal exam. Do the math with me. If this is one, double that, or 100% more would be two, 100% more would be three. The PSA is 3% accurate at diagnosing prostate cancer. So says one of my favorite books, the great, Johnny, could you shoot that up there? The Great Prostate Hoax. Uh, this is by Dr. Richard Ablin. He's the doctor who found the PSA molecule many years ago. Uh, this book, his signature on it means the world to me. His notes in it mean the world to me. Um, every man, this should be every woman who loves a man, has a son, etc. And every, this is your best protection, men. This is your best, an, an educated consumer is a wonderful thing before you walk into any doctor's office. How accurate is the mammogram? We now know with science, scientific studies, <clears throat> show that the mammogram is 58% accurate. That's 20, uh, 22 per, uh, 40, 42% false positive and false negative. So it's, this is 50, then the mammogram is just about that. The PSA test, as you just learned, isn't accurate at all. Prostate-specific antigen? Pregnant women don't have prostates, and yet they sometimes have elevated PSAs. It's unexplainable that they're still doing it, and they're not going to quit. It's generating billions and billions and billions of new patients. Unfortunately, there are a lot of men who aren't watching this right now. So every woman watching it, I want you to tell a loved one, a son, an uncle, a husband. It's 29 bucks. The Great Prostate Hoax by Dr. Richard Ablin. What a neat guy. We had him in the studio a couple of days. He's different. By the way, show your husband this friend of a friend of mine who has just learned that he's got prostate problems, uh, went online, and he said, John, he saw six or seven videos from Dr. Ablin that I did with him many years ago. And he said, you know what, I totally get it. I'm buying the book, but I totally get it from your interviews with him. This is a man with a mission. Let me read you the bottom of this. 
how big medicine hijacked the PSA test and caused a public health disaster. We are injuring and worse men who I believe don't have prostate cancer based on a test that is erroneous. Okay, just a thought. That, that video is at the top of our website. It's still up there. It's still up there, Dick Ablin. So if you go to our website, Dr. Ablin is right there, and you just press on that tonight. Guys, many of you raised your right hand the other night and said, you know, while Ruth and I were walking around running into each other, walking through the kitchen and down the hall, um, many of you said, that's it. I'm going to see a doctor because I'm tired of my health problems. I want to feel better. How do I start? Most of you say that's a stupid question. You start by seeing a doctor. He knows everything. Okay. Um, I want to teach you. That's not bad. If you want to go to a doctor, please don't let me stop you. I think sometimes they're quite valuable. But I also think hyperdiagnoses exist. I think we are massively overdiagnosing every disease. I'll go into it sometime, why I believe that. So at any rate, this 48-year-old guy, a friend of mine since he was 18 years old, I know his mom, I know his brother, I know his family. Uh, I met him when I first came out here to Dallas. He is a friend of the doctor who brought me out here. He was very sick last year. You cannot believe him. Can you believe him now, John, to look at him this morning? Um, you can't believe it's the same guy. I said to him, I'm going to be talking a little bit today about how do I get started to get healthy? And I said, would you do me a friend, uh, would you do me a friend, would you do me a favor, would you back up six, eight months ago? Because I saw him with a lot of health problems. Doug, in response to your questions, June 16th, 2018, 50 pounds overweight, addicted to sugar, severe fungal infection, glucose intolerant, insulin insensitivity, pre-diabetic, irregular sleep patterns, negative thought processes, which I kind of walked through with him. I try to help him with those. Very irritable, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, sleep apnea, totally stressed, huge appetite for processed foods, high glycemic carbs, grains, etc. 6.5 months later, today. I have now dropped 50 pounds of fat, 15 more to go, and simultaneously increased my lean uh, body mass, LBM, muscles, uh, 20 pounds of muscles. I promise to provide proof in the form of a before and after picture uh, in about a month. Uh, they say you can't treat the aforementioned, aforementioned chronic health problems naturally. I not only treated every one of them, I think I knocked them out. As I mentioned before, I knocked them out without taking one single pharmaceutical drug or one doctor office visit, and I did so within six months. And then he says the components. It's Kaufman Diet. He's a big keto guy. He's a total believer in the keto. Um, Kaufman Diet. End result. Feel 20 years younger. By the way, John, tell me he doesn't look 10, 20 years younger. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't. We hadn't seen him in a few weeks. Um, and he came in today. I feel 20 years younger, vibrant, energetic, uh, healthy. Every single health ailment I had six months ago has poof evaporated, it is gone. Let's talk a little bit about weight gain because I know so many of you are concerned about that, be they eight pounds or 150 pounds. I wanna teach you something today that you haven't heard before. The media is explosive at condemning carbohydrates. Uh, these are sugars in our diet. Did you know when you eat a bowl of wheat or oats and you masticate. That's the chewing process. You mix salivary enzymes with that grain, and as it's going down into the alimentary tract, those grains become glucose. Uh, they become a sugar, and fungus loves sugar. So the media is just the last 20 years when all these diets, I like the paleo, I like the keto, I love the Kaufman, because you can customize that to be what I think everybody needs. Uh, but all these diets came along, and the condemnation of grains in our diet and starches, sugar, rice, you know, things of that sort. Um, folks, what if, what if it weren't carbs that made us gain weight? And every one of you right now, if you're normal, you're, where is Doug going with this? There's really no carbohydrate in penicillin. 
and yet penicillin is penicillin penicillium the mold and its derivatives and there's hundreds of them are used to fatten cattle and chickens and pigs because no farmer wants to sell a 300 pound cow they want to sell a 1300 pound cow and they figured out in the 1950s that if you give these cows did you know 70 i think it's 70 percent of all antibiotics sold by drug companies is sold to the agricultural industry to fatten or to treat mastitis uh, or to treat uh, animal uh, injuries, infections. So the other 30%, of course, goes in pediatricians' offices and dentists and so forth, who just seem to have a gluttonous appetite for putting everything that walks in on antibiotics. Case in point, this is now cold and flu season. Um, if you dare to walk into a clinic, you're going on an antibiotic. I had a, another friend tell me today that he walked in because he was worried he's got pink eye. <clears throat> and he walked in, the doctor said, well, it looks like also you may have MRSA, methicillin, uh, resistant Staph aureus, a type of bacteria. Might have, yeah, but take this antibiotic and start taking it. Folks, that's non-judicious use of antibiotics. I want to tell you there's not a carbohydrate in an antibiotic, but antibiotics are well documented as making us fat, making us overweight. And it starts from our conception. Right? And it goes through to the birth process, and it goes through mom taking him in utero, the antibiotics get through, um, and we have to be very careful. Every 100% of nutritionists are going to say carbs make you fat. Then how many carbs are in penicillin? Okay, what about alcohol? Certainly, I, I put this up, I hope I still have it. Um, oh, good, I do. There's a website, it's kind of neat, Diet Doctor. First of all, consuming too much alcohol will slow down, uh, will slow down your weight loss and may undermine your health. In other words, alcohol is hops, malt, barley, grains, right? That's beer. And so we have to consider that when we drink alcohol, although it's not like eating a potato, we do get carbs. Thank you, sir. Uh, my Facebook friends here. Facebook and YouTube friends. So, to a certain extent, drinking alcohol, uh, it, here was the carb. Champagne has one, red wine and white wine two, a beer has 13 carbs. Okay, I thought this was really, really interesting. Bloody Mary. Man, I drank some Bloody Marys. Um, they used to have them at a restaurant at the beach where I went. <laughs> my, my life, it's like a confessional, a Catholic confessional. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned, you know. Um, Bloody Mary's with eggs and sausage was very good 50 years ago. A Bloody Mary has 13, a Cosmopolitan has, I'm sorry, Bloody Mary 7, Cosmopolitan 13, White Russian has 17, Rum and Coke, 39 calories, Vodka and Orange Juice, uh, Margarita, I mean, Vodka and Orange Juice has 28. The point is, rarely do people drink a drink. I met many people during the break and traveling and so forth, uh, who... Uh, drink alcohol. I uh, met a particularly nice guy at a party uh, a couple of weeks ago who is a friend of a friend and he's got a bunch of health problems and I said to him, um, it, could alcohol be linked? No, no it isn't linked with my health problems. Have you given it up? No, my doctor says I should be on two beers a day, no more, no less. Do you see? Have you hit that wall with people? My doctor says you have cancer, horrible thing to hear. My doctor says, the other three words, my doctor says. Uh, and folks, I don't have an ax to grind with medicine. If I drive out of here and then my old pickup truck get in a wreck and I break my arm, I'm not gonna put a, a cucumber poultice on it, right? I'm gonna get an x-ray and put it in a cast and, and work with it and go to a doctor. Um, if I can just tell you two things, there was an article that came out today and the article says, uh, according to new studies, excess body weight is now an established cause of 13 different kinds of cancer. Hmm, I've heard that before. So I did a little research on a, on a, a lecture I gave to physicians and to the lay public here a, a year or two ago. Various epidemiological studies have reported that frequent use of antibiotics significantly increases the risk of prostate, lung, breast, colorectal, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Five kinds of cancer. Okay, you got that? Saccharomyces brewer's yeast is the fungus, and the poison it makes is called alcohol. 
Other mycotoxins besides alcohol can be introduced into beverages through the use of mold-contaminated grains and fruits. I had no idea that wine companies and beer companies wanted to buy moldy grain or old grapes. They're already fermented, right? Um, producers often use grains that are too contaminated with fungus and mycotoxins to be used for table food. So the risk is higher. This is out of the Council of Agricultural Science and Technology right here. Here it is. Can you get this, John? This is a great book for those of you who are studying mycotoxins. Mycotoxins, Risk in Plants, Animal, and Human Studies. It's CAST, C-A-S-T, the Council for Agricultural Science and Technology. Really cool painting. And I'm telling you, this book is a godsend to somebody like me who studies antibiotics, mycotoxins, alcohol, and so forth. And they say, alcohol producers use grains that are too contaminated with fungus and mycotoxins to be used for table foods. Amen. They'll pay more if the grain is already moldy. Then it goes on to say, a new, this on WebMD, this is a pharmaceutical website, a new analysis finds compelling evidence that drinking alcohol can cause at least seven kinds of cancer. So I just, is eight? At least seven, right? Eight for alcohol, five for antibiotics. We have 13 kinds of cancer. Excess body weight Excess body weight is an established cause of 13 kinds of cancer. Mycotoxins injure and kill human beings. Doctors don't know this, so we got to be careful. And then, John, if before I answer some of these questions, thank you guys. What a blessing it is to, to know you and to do this show. I really missed it the past couple of weeks. Um, play from current slide. Okay. Fungal mycotoxin properties. <clears throat> Here are what certain fungi cause. Certain fungi are estrogenic. Wow, that's not safe. What's all these uh, HER positive, uh, breast cancer uh, estrogen positive? They're endocrine disruptors. What is diabetes? They're carcinogenic. What is cancer? They're mutagenic. You mean they can mutate our DNA? Yep. Can they get in the nucleus? Yep. They're trimmergenic. Okay. Sometime, can I do a, a show with you guys on these new shots for Alzheimer's disease and these new pills and an old antibiotic is coming back as a, as a cocktail to prevent. I will find the antifungal component of those because I think Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and, and dementia and so forth often have a fungal basis. So they're tremorogenic, teratogenic, that means they're toxic to an unborn fetus. Genotoxic, they're toxic to your genes. Neurotoxic, your a nervous system, uh, nephrotoxic, your kidneys, hepatotoxic, your liver, hemotoxic, your blood, your ticker, your lymph system, your skin, and most importantly, they suppress your immune system. So that we know, I want to feel better, Doug. How do I get started? The best counsel I can leave you with today is to understand that if you're eating a grain diet and you're drinking soda pop and eating candy, I'm not so convinced that sugar is the poison we think it is. I think fungus demands sugar of us once growing in our body. If it gets that sugar, it fuels the fungus. Did you guys ever see Mighty Mouse when you were a little kid? If, you, John, if you're my age, you saw Mighty Mouse. It's normal little mouse, you know, who, da da, or Popeye, spin it, you know, he just blows up. That's what sugar, be it a baked potato, be it a drink, uh, be it a bowl of cereal, be it a tablespoon of chocolate bar, a tablespoon of sugar, it feeds fungus. So instead of addressing the periphery of all these problems, let's cut to the chase. Let's talk about knowing the cause. Would we crave carbs at all if we didn't have fungi demanding it? These fungi change everything about you, your personality, your diet, your exercise program in their best defense. They want to live, and they'll kill you to see to it that they live. Okay, let's see if I can get some of these questions for you now. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start here. Let's see, YouTube. 
Hi Doug, I'm having burning electrical needle stinging sensation in my right thigh when I stand daily and sometimes when I'm sitting. I'm 53 years young, diabetic type 2 with neuropathy. Please help. I'm just getting over a cold. Started the diet this week. I'm not getting a flu or pneumonia. I'm not getting a flu or pneumonia this year. Probably flu shot or pneumonia shot. After all these years of getting them, I have diabetes. Sherry, thank you for joining us. I'll understand all of you as we communicate here. I am not a doctor. Don't ever let me tell you not to get a flu shot or the pneumonia shot or the shingle shot or, you know, I could go on for 20 minutes. Um, I can tell you what I might do. You've got a disease, a, a sugar metabolism disease called diabetes. I think you said type 2, type 2 diabetes. Um, it is my opinion, Sherry, that type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle uh, diabetes, whereas type 1 is maybe genetic, maybe you're born with this. And that's what we teach anyway, not me, that's what people teach. How do we give mice diabetes? We inject streptozotocin, a different antibiotic that we're injecting in Alzheimer's patients now with good results. We inject streptozotocin <clears throat> into them. And streptozotocin is a mycotoxin. And after you inoculate these mice or bunnies or monkeys or whatever you're testing with diabetes for a year or so, you give them little inoculations, you keep their immune system prompted uh, to these mycotoxins, they get elevated blood sugar. Sherry, how did you get that fungus in your body? Short of somebody giving you streptozotocin, uh, you know, an antibiotic drug, an old one, and inducing diabetes, how did Sherry get it? Um, chances are, as a little girl, you stayed with grandparents in a basement in Ohio somewhere or something like that. Chances are your parents may have had a mold problem in their home, a leaky roof, thank you, John, leaky roof, etc. Chances are you were on antibiotics as a little girl. Your loving mother took you to a loving pediatrician who won't let a child leave his office without giving a loving medication. So their medical education taught them. And that would be a penicillin-derived or cep cephalexin or a cephalosporin-derived antibiotic. There are many. You got mold. So how then at 50 years old? What I'd like you to do, Sherry, is think about this. Okay, now I've got these needle pricks going all over my legs and they hurt and I've got neuralgia and, and uh, diabetes and I'm feeling, or neuropathy and I'm feeling absolutely miserable. Um, that's the culmination. That is where you sit today, Sherry, is the crescendo. All of this has built up to a 53-year-old Sherry who doesn't feel like a 23-year-old Sherry. Um, what happened? Go back to when your health problem started. All of you watching this right now, I always used to do this with the doctor's patients. And 100% of them, folks, you'd be sitting in an exam room. I, I didn't have a table. I never, you know, I just sit there at a desk with these people. Hey, Sherry, tell me a little about your problems. Doug, I can't even stand. Oh, it hurts so bad. I got, you can't see them but I got these needles shooting on my thigh and down my gastrocnemius, my calf muscle, and man, it hurts, and I can't sleep at night, I've got neuropathy. Uh, anything else wrong? Yeah, I have blood sugar problems. I'm diabetic, type two diabetic. Tell me when all of this began to bother you. Well, I've been living, the doctors tell me, with the, the, my endocrinologist tells me, uh, with this for about 10 years. And look at me, Doug, I need to lose 20, 30, 50 pounds. You know, I just don't feel good, I'm constipated. I guess I'll tell you everything. You know, I'm going through early menopause, I have migraine headaches, I'm moody. This is once you establish a relationship. This is why I'm encouraging all you guys to go through that course and become a health counselor. You know, go in and work with a doctor. People really open up to someone if they believe he or she cares about them. A doctor doesn't have time. The average doctor spends 11 seconds listening to his patients. Says a mouthful, doesn't it? When you had someone like me in the office saying, wow, that must hurt. If you go back, Sherry, tell me about this. Antibiotics? Yeah, I mean, I had inner ear infections. My mom said I had tonsillitis. Don't worry, Doug, I had them taken out when I was four years old. Um, but I talked like this. I had chronic sinus problems. Were you ever exposed to mold? No, not that I know of. Do you ever smell mildew? Do you ever spend weeks with grandparents? Oh yeah, oh, they had a farm and that old farmhouse that we love filled with antique furniture. But man, I'd cough and cough. You see where I'm going with this? Sherry, if you do that tonight, laying in bed, analyzing, everybody's asleep, it's 11 o'clock at night, and you're analyzing your body. Wow, Doug's onto something here. 
How did I get this? See, the new woman's book is going to say there is a plethora of ways we can get this. One of which, I'm going to bowl all you guys over, might be a man in Sherry's life 30 years ago. Might be a husband. See, men grow mold and women grow mold, a type of mold called dermatophytes, uh, on our skin. And men can pass this to females during a loving, normal, healthy relationship. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the woman's got urinary tract infections, or she's incontinent, or she's having horrible yeast problems. And we men just say, well, go off to the doctor. It wasn't me. I don't know what happened. And sometimes it is. All I want you to do, Sherry, is think. When you were 21, did you have the same problem Doug Kaufman had? Did you overconsume medication maybe to, to treat uh, a post-traumatic stress situation? More people have post-traumatic stress than were in the wars. You expect that from a guy like me in Vietnam, but you don't expect it from a young woman who is abused or beaten or bullied, etc. Post-traumatic stress is a real phenomenon. So, Sherry, what you do is tonight in bed, figure out when did this begin? Ooh, that's right. I need to take aspirin. Aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid. It is an antifungal. Don't be afraid of taking it. Even Tylenol, they say, has antifungal properties, but I worry about the liver in the case of that. And I worry about bleeding when people take too many aspirin, the gut lining, etc. Um, now, if I were you, I'd start the new year off right. Right hand up. I am going to follow Kaufman's diet from January 10th to February 10th. I'm going to give Doug 30 days. It might be all you need. What happens when you follow the Kaufman diet? Really simple. You starve fungus. You just don't feed fungus. Fungus is a living organism. Unlike bacteria, unlike protozoa, unlike virus in your body, fungus is unique. Unfortunately, fungal DNA and human DNA is very, very similar. Fungi and humans have a lot in common. More and more, we're no longer killing animals and sacrificing them to see if our cancer drugs will work or not. We're now using yeast samples because they're just like human cells. So to, the perfect antifungal will never be here, Sherry. It won't be here. Because to kill yeast or fungus perfectly is to kill Sherry perfectly. And you don't want that. Okay, so I talk about rotating these antifungals, but most importantly, starving them. No matter how advanced you are on the illness realm, of starving them over an extended period of time. Sherry, you should see in a week of following this diet, bacon and eggs. This morning I had what? A grapefruit this morning. We ate a salad that a restaurant makes for us with uh, all sorts of onions and tomatoes and so forth right down the street here. I'm a Kaufman guy. I'm following that. I think within a week or 10 days, these pins and needles will go. But there's a side effect to this Kaufman diet that I need to share with you. You'll lose weight. Um, once you stop feeding fungus, remember antibiotic-induced weight gain, alcohol-induced weight gain? Once you stop putting the fungus in your body, you begin to lose weight. Killing them is really a good thing. So you're getting over a cold. I understand so many people have that. Thank you, John. Um, lay down tonight. Do some real brainstorming in bed. Figure out when this all began and your aha moments will follow. This is how I counsel thousands of people in doctor's offices. And you can't, you know, sometimes on rare occasions, um, I saw one of them in a big health food store out here about a year ago. And she was a friend of Jerry Jones's, the guy that owns whatever that oblong ball is that they throw and pat each other on the rear ends. What's the name of our team, the Dallas Mavericks? Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys. You can tell I'm not much of a sports guy. Um, but she was a friend of Jerry Jones's and became a client of ours. And uh, I saw her 30 years after seeing her as a client. She looked great. And you should have seen what she was buying. She said, I'm still on your diet. I veer from it all the time. I feel horrible. I go back to it. Sherry, once you have a month under your belt of my diet, this program, taking antifungals. That could be vitamin C. That could be resveratrol. It could be garlic. Once you have a month under your belt, you'll know that what I sold you on this show today was a volume switch. 
You can turn those symptoms, the prickly on your leg, the colds, the chronic flus. Remember, fungal mycotoxins deteriorate your immune system. Published. No wonder you're always sick. No wonder you're getting everything. Um, and you'll know with certainty this is something you control. You can turn it way down, or conversely, as I've taught for the past several years on social media, you can turn it way up. A couple of beers, a sandwich, um, you know, a baked potato from time to time, rice, yeah, and you turn the symptoms way up. You won't see it. That's a weird thing. Did you guys who fell off the program over the holiday, did you realize once you fell off, once you had that piece of pie, who doesn't do that at Thanksgiving? Um, did you find the next day you're going through your sock drawer looking for an old Hershey's Kiss? You're going through your cupboards hoping there's a piece of candy up there? I get to hear this all the time. You can figure this out, Sherry. You're smart. Do you have a disease that is going to demand you see an endocrinologist the rest of your life? Or do you have a disease that Sherry can retake control, not saying don't go to an endocrinologist, that you can control the symptoms of the rest of your life? You'll need a month to tell me the answer to that. Okay? Next is Steve. Oh boy, Dr. Gundry said, if you don't take a prebiotic, you're wasting money. I'm on a probiotic and I need a lectin blocker to eat most foods. What do you think? Trucker Steve in the fungal jungle. <laughs> Love you guys. So most, <clears throat> most, this is why I got to tell you, and Steve, I'm going to disclose this to you, and I promised you guys I would do this. Um, when I recommend a product, if that product, and sometimes it is, if they are sponsors of mine, if they write a check to the company that does my TV show, I'm going to disclose that to you. Because sometimes people aren't so honest, and they won't disclose that, and you'll think it's an endorsement for me, when in fact, they're writing me a check. Having said that, Dr. Ohira's probiotics have the prebiotic and the probiotic and the postbiotic. They create good chemicals uh, in the body. There are many probiotics um, that have uh, FOS. Now this one's 25, 30 years old. They first started to talk about a prebiotic called FOS. It's called fructo-oligosaccharides, right? It is a fertilizer, if you will, that assists the seeds of the probiotic, the bacteria, in planting in the gut. So FOSs are some of the old prebiotics. Um, there are many, many good probiotics on the market. Uh, and I encourage you, let's see, need a lectin blocker to eat most foods. Wow, enzyme. Um, are you taking enzymes? Many people, yeah, remember this, Steve, they say you are what you eat. Mm. You are what you digest. Most people can eat greens and get no calcium. They're not digesting a thing. They can eat green leafy vegetables and end up with, you know, nothing. So a good enzyme, I think, before you eat, 20 minutes before you eat, proteolytic enzyme before you eat, uh, and then before you go to bed, a good probiotic should have this. And, and once again, Steve, why are these problems surfacing? Why these tummy problems that you're having? Um, look, this guy Gundry is a smart guy. I don't know him personally, but he's paying somebody a ton of money on the Yahoo site to say, this doctor says, throw your probiotics away. Those headlines disgust me because for 50 years I've been in this field. Don't throw your probiotics away. It's just a sales gimmick to buy his probiotic. Understand, folks, when you can begin to read beyond the headline then you'll really understand. There are a lot of doctors paying a lot of money to make themselves famous right now. Okay? Good question, Steve. Keep on trucking. Uh, walking tall. Love your show. I was hoping Santa would get me eating your way to good health, but didn't get it. Where can I order your book, and could I get you to sign it? Uh, walking tall, if you'll do me a favor, and I'm going to send you one free since Santa didn't. Be you know, he had that sleigh, John. He had my books all over that sleigh. He landed at Berkeley, the cutest kid in the world. Coco, did you hear Santa Claus last night? And I said, no. And he said, I didn't either. I slept. But Mama said Santa Claus. I mean, the innocence. John, the, he has this little book, the children's Bible, with David and Goliath and Jonah. And he goes, whoa, 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 Coco, stop reading. This, you can live in a whale's belly? 
And I said, well, I, I can't, you know. I didn't say I'm going to Nivea, you know. It, the cutest questions, the most innocent questions. They're these kids, I'm telling you, what happens to us? Is it fungus? You know, what, I, the sweetest, my heart melts. When I lay down, his mom lets me read him two books before we go to bed, and the little blue truck is always one of the books, and then he likes this Bible book, and, uh, and he learns. But the questions, I get the opportunity, how cool is that, that I get to lay down with a little four-year-old boy, and he keeps saying, no, no, Coco, um, David looks like a little guy. I'm a little guy. In Berkeley, what that means is when God's on your side, you can defeat any giant. You just need to talk to God. Well, is he in this room? You bet he is. And you know what? He's inside you. I mean, the, the conversations. Gosh, I get goosebumps talking about. I am so in love with those little boys, I can't even tell you. I'm the luckiest man in the world. Uh, I'm going to send you Walking Tall. I'm going to send you the book, and yes, I will sign it, Eating Your Way to Good Health. If you will go to, help me with this, John or Damon or Jordan, um, if you will give us your mailing address on... What is that website, John? A private... Uh, what is it, John? Instant message. Instant message. Was that from YouTube or was that from Facebook? Oh, oh, this is YouTube. Yeah. So they have to go instant message us? On the Know the Cause uh, site. Okay, and, and remind me you're walking tall. Now everybody's going to do that probably, though. Walking tall. Um, we'll find it. Yeah, we'll find it. Don't worry. And I will be happy to send you that out. Santa didn't get that for you. Shame, shame, shame. Yes, we sell books. Um, in a couple of weeks, we're going global with our show. You talk about a God thing. Um, his people are perishing for lack of knowledge. And I feel so humbled that I've been chosen to go into 200 countries with this message. Um, really exciting time for me. Uh, Terry says, hey, Doug. I don't like oatmeal because of the mold, but what do you think of organic oatmeal? Okay, Terry, such a good question. You're such a, a bright group of people. Thank you. Um, organic means that it is grown under very strict conditions. They don't use sprays, uh, bactericides, fungicides. Um, they're grown under organic standards, and California has one of the strictest, and, and I think that's good. When our kids were little, we could not afford the $200 a month, if you can believe this, still can't, that insurance cost us. We had Blue Shield, Blue Cross, but the kids were one in three, or one in four when we moved here to Texas, and we couldn't afford $2,400 a year to insure them, medical insurance. Well, we got to thinking, wait a minute, we've never taken them to a doctor, um, but what if they fall, what if they go... So we made a pact with ourselves. We took a couple hundred dollars and bought these little tiny for Evan, who is now 37, <clears throat> the little tiny Nike walking shoes, and we got them out on our land. We had 11 acres, and we got them out on the land. We built a Tarzan rope for he and his brother, uh, and we made a, a, a corporate, a, a family decision that we were going to feed the boys organic food only. Uh, organic food still grows mold. Organic just means the way it is grown, the way the seed germinates and so forth. It's pure. It, it should be very, very pure, as opposed to chemical sprays all over these. And you've seen the tractors just spray and everything, and the airplanes swooping down to kill the bugs on the... Organic farmers don't use all of that. But your food, your oats, can still mold. Um, so you have to be careful. There are two different questions here. Should I eat organic? I would. Um, does organic mean it avoids mold? No. And unfortunately, you can't see mold. Uh, yeast grow in filaments, and those filaments, I've talked about it, can poke a hole through the lumen, the lining of the intestine. And when it pokes a hole, the first symptom you have is not gastric bleeding, it's food allergy. All of your foods are leaking through the white blood cells or phagocytizing it, um, and you're making an antibody, those that don't get phagocytized, you're making a, a, a B cell antibody a mirror image of that uh, little chip of oat or chip of broccoli or whatever it is. Um, so food allergy begins happening when you have gut leakage or gut permeability. Um, I don't think, um, Darlene, if, oh, I'm sorry, where was I? I'll get to you, Darlene. Terry, I don't think eating oats 
I ate oats. Uh, I made some for Berkeley. He loves oats. And so I went down to the health food store and got him some oats. And I loved it. I, lo I haven't had oats for so long. But oat, of course, is one of those things on the number two diet, the Kaufman two diet, that we begin to challenge every once in a while. If you have cancer, if you have an autoimmune disease and you're very sick, um, then I wouldn't go that way. Uh, I'd stay on the Kaufman one diet. But, uh, you know, if you're healthy, go for it. Good for you, Terry. Thank you. Anne, my friend Anne. Uh, hello from the mountains, praying the Lord's richest blessing on you and your family for your crew and families for this new year. Uh, you look awesome in your shirt. The shirt's old. The guy in it's 20 years older. John, uh, Dave Holland, the doctor I ran that with, when we finished 13.1 miles, he was like 29 years old, he came up to me, and he, I finished in two hours and four minutes or something, and he said, uh, see, now couldn't you turn around and... <laughs> I said, Dave, if you can help me to my truck, I couldn't drive 13 more miles. A few weeks later, he ran the whole marathon, the whole 26 mile. What a good man he is. Uh, thank you so much, Ann. <clears throat> can fungus in the pancreas cause fat loss? Um, yeah, thank you, John. Um, can, pan can fungus in the pancreas, first of all, fungus can get into any tissue in the human body except the teeth. I think a lot of times pancreatitis, anytime there's itis, it means infection. A doctor hears itis, he says bacteria. I hear itis, I hear fungus. We're just two different animals. Um, but uh, can it cause fat loss? I don't know. Metabolically, I guess it could, um, but that's a good question. I don't have any idea if you're losing fat. Do you guys know about the keto diet? I mean, the keto diet, instead of burning carbs, you begin burning your own fat. You put yourself not into ketoacidosis, which is dangerous. You put yourself into ketosis, and that isn't dangerous. Um, so I, I know that doesn't answer your question. I really don't know. If, if fungus in the pancreas, if a mycotic infection of the pancreas would induce fat loss. I don't know. I wish I could help you. Thank God I haven't been down that path. Uh, can you recommend a liquid multivitamin? My daughter has a hard time swallowing any pills. Uh, Joyce, this is where I love, and they are clients, uh, a company called um, Life Extension. Uh, Life Extension, <laughs> John, they've got to have a thousand products. They have physicians, physicians, MDs, and NDs, naturopathic physicians, and chiropractors all working in this huge room that we got to go in and see upstairs, and they have nutritionists. When you call Life Extension, we'll, we should put the phone number up for her and everyone, uh, for uh, Joyce. When you call them, they don't care if you have a 15-minute question. They'll talk to you, and if they don't have the product, they remind me of the miracle on 34th Street. Gimbal's doesn't have it, send them across the street to get it. They're very kind, wonderful people. But I would recommend you talk to them. Um, one, uh, folks, over the uh, holidays, I received a gift basket from Optivita. This is their Nano Silver. Um, it was the kindest thing, and I got to, from that gift basket, which had all of these little goodies in it, the silver solution, you know, these lozenges, the hemp, the curcumin, all these things in it, um, I got to gift. I met so many people. There were parties and outings and fun times in different cities. And for some reason, I'm like a magnet to people who have health problems. Either they see me on TV or they've heard that I might be able to help. And so people come up and, and talk to me about these things. And I gifted. I know there was a couple there that... Um, didn't have the resources to go out and buy these. And my wife said, gift them, give it to them. It's out in your car. And I went out and gave them. Um, it's not expensive. This is a company that's on its way up, thanks to you guys. It's called Optivita Health. <clears throat> Those of you suffering cold, flu, pneumonia, symptoms of that sort, always rule out anything more severe with a doctor. Uh, but every home in America should have these products, including their hemp. I'm telling you, I took, John, have you used that? Okay, I'm, uh, look, in, in, in all honesty and transparency, I did some hemp 
when I was out of the Navy, 23 years old, 24 years old, somewhere in there, only it wasn't hemp. <laughs> it was a leaf that you roll up and smoke. And help with my post-traumatic stress. Alcohol and that seemed to keep me at bay. I'll never forget I was at a movie with a girlfriend and a car going in front. This was at UCLA on at the Bruins out there on the boulevard. We were waiting in line for half an hour and a car went by a low rider and the exhaust popped and I almost passed out. I was hyperventilating, I had a sweater on and that scared me so much from that pop. But with a little hemp in my body, not hemp. Hemp is not marijuana. Hemp is the fraction of cannabinoids taken away from the stems, the seeds, the, the leaf, etc. This has nothing to do with hemp. This has no THC in it. But the, for three or four nights, I've never had a problem sleeping, ever, even in Vietnam. But I thought, I need to be, help this company. I need to be a spokesperson for it. So I'd take you know, a, a full CC in a glass of water, stir it up, and I'd drink it down and go to bed. And I slept like a baby. On about the second or third morning, I got up, and I'm telling you, I slept so calm. I went to sleep like this, and I woke up like this seven and a half hours later. Um, those of you with sleep problems, it's actually studied for its effect with pettit and grand mal seizures, epilepsy. Uh, I would highly recommend it for that. But those of you who aren't sleeping well, try some of Optivita's hemp. You can just go online and Jordan will give you that phone number. Uh, what will treat a very painful boil? Uh, Missy, look, um, get it lanced and they can do that at a $75 uh, little, in your town, there's probably 10 of them, these little uh, medical service centers where they have emergency room doctors. Go in there and get it. They can, uh, enjoy, I worked in dermatology for five years. I saw some boils I couldn't believe, and they look so painful. How people put their legs together or close their arms blew me away. And the nurse uh, would inject a little tiny, and the patient didn't jump, little tiny bits of epinephrine around the boil, and then went in with what looked like an X-Acto knife, a, 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 a scalpel, cut it open and hit it, and it looked like lava. There was so much in there. And the patient would come back three days later and she'd rebandage it. But they said, this is the best thing that ever happened. What we try and do is prevent skin bacteria from boiling, from creating boils. Um, but if we can't, once it begins, get it lanced. And it takes two minutes. And it didn't look painful. It looked painful, but it, they told me it wasn't painful. So that's what I would do if I were you. Um, okay, so... Uh, ta -ta -ta. Will eating grapefruit interfere with the phase two detoxification process? I'm trying to increase my glutathione. Sherry, there is a product, a probiotic, that you can take. Do you have that, John? Um, made by the same company that brings you Dr. O'Hara's probiotic. Do you have it, John? Let me show it to the folks. And it makes this one? ME3. Yeah, the, do you have RegActive over there? Well, let me just tell you. Uh, RegActive is the name of the probiotic. It has a bacteria newly discovered. I think it was in Bulgaria where these doctors, and I got to meet them. Uh, they discovered a bacteria called ME3 that makes glutathione, the major detoxifier, antioxidant for our liver. This is so great because you can't take glutathione capsules and have it make glutathione in your body. So we had to take its precursor, which is called N-acetylcysteine, and they have supplements of N-acetylcysteine, and then it eventually makes glutathione. Short of that, getting IV glutathione, like Dr. Ganino and, and Dr. Uh, many of my friends who are doctors do intravenous glutathione. <clears throat> but this is inexpensive, regactive, and if you're looking for glutathione, uh, look no further. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, oh, oh, I didn't quite finish here. Okay, um, got Missy, and where did I go to that? Wow. Oh, here it is. Uh, grapefruit interfere with Kaufman phase two detoxification process. As a matter of fact, it's on the Kaufman two diet. Um, what are my thoughts on colostrum? Colostrum is the first protein out of the breast when mother begins breastfeeding baby. 
Um, I'm all for colostrum. I'm big on it. Uh, I think it prevents gut permeability. I think it allows uh, probiotics to stay in the body. I, th I am very bullish on probiotics or on colostrum now. After mother is done feeding the baby, bovine colostrum, a pure form, a non-antibiotic, non-hormone, all this stuff that the uh, people are doing in the dairy world, um, a very pure form of bovine colostrum I think has some of the same benefits. I think it can help heal a leaky gut. Uh, so I'm, I'm very big on colostrum. There's actually papers that talk about its immune enhancing properties, and let me tell you what I think about that. Fungus deteriorates the immune system. It defeats the immune system. So anything that enhances that immunity must have antifungal properties. Same with colostrum. Okay? Um, so I've got all that. Okay. Uh, Doug, do you have, uh, have you ever used boric acid in a capsule for yeast infection? Um, I talk about that in the New Woman's book. I have recommended it. I obviously lack the plumbing, but... Um, I think it's amazing, and it's in the scientific literature. As a matter of fact, it's on PubMed.org, talking about boric acid inserted vaginally for yeast infections. Um, always, I, I got to tell you, um, always talk to a nurse or a doctor at your doctor's office and say, I want to try, look, you've been treating me with antibiotics for this forever. I want to try something called boric acid. It's safe according to the literature. Uh, could I try it? Get a thumbs up from the nurse or the doctor before you use that. I have a, had a dry cough before Christmas. I'm on Kaufman too. What do you recommend? I recommend you try these. Suck on these lozenges, um, you know, every half hour or so and a teaspoon of this three times a day, inexpensive, uh, comes from OptiVita Health, O-P-T-I-V-I-D-A, OptiVita Health. I want free from my CPAP machine. Good for you, Sherry. Do you think walking or running would strengthen my lungs and help me get, uh, get rid of the machine? Could it be fungus? Sherry, where do you live? Um, doesn't matter, and here's why. American Airlines has a great deal. You can fly anywhere in the United States just about for $250. I would go see a doctor named Soraya. He is in Denton, Texas, right near the airport, right down the road from Dallas International or DFW Airport. This doctor and I go back a couple of years when he was a student of mine when I gave a lecture to a group of doctors. His world changed when he heard about fungus. He suspected that he shouldn't be handing all these patients antibiotics, that he should be handing them antifungals. We now have the data that we're publishing this year in 2019 that most patients, most huge amount, beyond 50%, actually grow yeast in here. And that's why they need a CPAP machine. So I would get down, I'd say, Doc, could you do a bronchoscopy on me? Pull some of that stuff out send it off to a laboratory in a couple of weeks. I want to grow it out. I want to know which yeast, which fungus I was exposed to. Folks, most of you will find when you go home, have your house tested, it's the identical mold growing in the ducting systems in your house that you have harbored in your lungs for years and years. And then the... And then the... You know, growing in the lungs, the same mold. And he'll put you on an antifungal medicine and get rid of that crud uh, in there. Good for you wanting to get off a CPAP machine. I think that's admirable. Uh, dear Doug from Isabella, how would you treat chronic fungal uh, laryngitis? You've, okay, good for you, Isabella. My brother has been dealing with her for over 15 years and nothing he does ever works. He has fungus in his lungs embedded in his esophagus, vocal cord sinus. He has tried going off sugar, antifungals, systemic enzymes, gut detox, liver detox, heavy metal detox. The fungus just doesn't want to leave. Uh, thank you so much in advance. <clears throat> okay, there's a product that I literally can't believe, and I'm just trying to think of Al's product. Um, doot, 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 doot. Man, there's so many products in my brain, I just can't. Uh, this is... Um, oh, I talk about it all the time. It's either IV form or it's oral form. Uh, linoleic acid. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Al Sanchez? No. It's a form of sodium caprolate. Oh, come on, guys. Al Sanchez, he was here. 
He and I spent a great day together, had lunch. His product is called... Um, okay, so I'm going to have to get with her when I think of what that product is, Isabella. Uh, Isabella, if, if here's my attitude on systemic mycosis, what she has, bloodstream fungal infections. One bullet doesn't knock it out. He's 15, he's very young. Um, I would rotate, I'd use Sporinox first. Wish I could remember the name of that. I would use Sporinox for two weeks, then Diflucan for two weeks. Uh, then I would use um, Nizorol for two weeks. If the doctor will allow that, um, I, would, I would absolutely use that. Um, because fungus moves around and it can defeat antifungals. Wish I could remember Al's product, but I'm gonna, Al Sanchez, I'll write you when I get home this evening after I feed the cats. Uh, I will write you, Isabella, with, uh, with what that product is. Uh, but it's linoleic acid. <clears throat> it's a dynamic antifungal product. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Now, next week, we'll go three more days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Do tell a friend. Recommend this. Ring my bell if you're watching me on YouTube. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you're watching me on, uh, uh, on Facebook. Thank you for being with me today. God bless. I'll see you next time.